Hello, today I want to talk about Micah Stouffer. She's a YouTuber with over 700,000 subscribers. She mainly talks about being a stay-at-home mum, homeschooling her kids, and, um, and also about tidying her home. She's recently hit the headlines because she adopted a two-year-old child from China, and two years on, she's changed her mind about the adoption, and the child is now in foster care. She didn't actually mention this on her YouTube channel for months after it happened, and people were asking where her child was. They'd intentionally looked for a child with special needs. So why would they go through the whole process of adopting this child only to change their mind two years later. After multiple assessments, after multiple evaluations, numerous medical professionals have felt that he needed a different fit and that his medical needs he needed more. But what kind of medical professional would advise you to give up your child? It doesn't make any sense. We, we haven't made this video yet. It's because we've been trying to protect his privacy, his rights, and also just try to not mess up his future that was laid out in front of us. We're trying our best to make sure we don't impact that at all by making this video and then... What is this secret that would mess up his life for him? And it's just been a really hard place to be in. We're three minutes in and most of what they've said has been about Micah. So this is by far the hardest video James and I have ever yeah. publicly had to make. You have no idea what that means to me and the, some of the special messages that you've sent. Like, just thank you. Thank you for the bottom I can't say enough how hard Micah has tried throughout this entire journey and the amount of effort she's put into this and helping Huxley as much as she can. There wasn't a, a minute that I didn't try our hardest and and that's why like on Instagram and stuff I've tried to like let you know as little as I could but I couldn't tell you anymore because I didn't want to mess anything up with what's going on legally. And if I said something, was I gonna mess up things for his future? <laughs> and it's just been a really hard place to be in. Like, because you're grieving. You, I wanna share with you guys. Like I know deep down inside that I don't have to say anything. Like I'm not, I don't have to say this. I don't have to, but I want to, like I want to tell you. So when you get like insidious, hurtful comments, it just like really makes it hurt worse. It's not about me at all. Isn't she still talking about herself? I'm keen to hear about Huxley now and to know how he's doing. You guys have been there for us for so much and I want to, I want to fill you in on what's going on and what hard, like do I feel like a failure as a mom? Like 500%. It's not that she's a failure as a mom. It's that she's not a mom to him anymore. She's changed her mind. And that's what's got everyone so upset. The reason why we can't go into detail of what actually transpired is because we're truly going to protect Huxley's privacy and not let people know what happened, what everything that went on. To make us make this decision. this decision or to even come to medical professionals with the need to get more help. This is now the third time in their video that they've referred to this terrible thing their four-year-old child did that's too awful to mention. Anything that happened in the home that was hard for Hux, that's not fair for me to put out there publicly. That's his privacy. So we're not going to talk about that. That's not, that's not appropriate. Like that's, and that'll never be appropriate. I didn't adopt a little boy to share these things publicly. She can't stop talking about this awful thing the child did that if she mentioned it would make him look so bad. If it was really for his privacy, why would she keep bringing it up? She hints at it here again and makes it sound like he's a danger to others. Here's how Micah responded to criticism about her and her husband giving up Huxley. We would never just give up a child with special needs. This is a personal matter to Hux. It had nothing to do with he just had autism. 
multiple scary things happened inside the home towards our other children. And if these events happened with one of my biological kids, after all the help and after the behaviours we witnessed, sadly, we would have no other choice than to seek help and get their needs met. My guess is he might have had meltdowns because children with autism can have those quite often. Maybe he hit the other children. Maybe uh, he bit them because he might have wanted to have something in his mouth because a lot of autistic children do. And this would fit with what Micah says happened when he was first adopted. It was really hard because Kova and Radley actually didn't attach to Huxley at all. Um, Radley very much disliked Huxley because when Huxley came home, he would bite, pinch, hit. He would do really, really mean things to Radley. But I think telling us that would make it sound like much less of an issue than um, continually bringing it up and not telling us what it is. And I wonder if that's the real reason why she's not talking about it. Because if we knew that it was because he had hit another kid or, or bitten or kicked one at the age of four, that it would be ludicrous for parents to just give their child away. But before I get into the video, I did just want to say thank you to how amazing our viewers have been. We have some viewers who have been just like so incredibly kind and respectful of our son's privacy. I just want to say thank you. Like that really got me through some really hard times and I just want to say thanks. Was it really that she was grateful that they respected her son's privacy? Or was it more that she was grateful that they accepted this news and didn't ask questions? She's turned off the likes and dislikes and she deletes any negative comments. His new mummy has medical professional mm. training and it is a very good fit. But according to a journalist who's been doing her research, this isn't true. Huxley has not been adopted into a forever home with a new mother. He's been fostered. So that means there are no guarantees that he is going to be adopted. I just got confirmation that Huxley's in a great foster home. Might be temporary or might turn permanent, but in case anyone's wondering where he is, he's safe in the foster system and still in the US. Micah saying his new mummy makes it sound very different from what it is. Micah's post continues, Huxley wanted this decision 100%. We saw that in family time with other people, he constantly chose them and signed and showed tons of emotion to show us and let us know he wanted this. Huxley never had a say in his adoption and he one needed more help and also wanted this and we know that 100%. So they're saying that Huxley signed to tell his parents that he wanted them to give him to this woman, that he wanted to be her son and he didn't want them as a family anymore. That, that's, that's what they're saying. So this four-year-old child is responsible for their decision to give him up and hand him over to this lady. First, they've tried to blame a doctor um, and, and they've tried to tell us that the doctor said this wasn't the right fit and they needed to give their child up. And now they're saying that it's their four-year-old child's decision. The thought that they, that they assume people are going to um, believe that is, is quite bizarre. It would be funny if it wasn't so tragic. This is her first video about the adoption. We are in the process of bringing home a little boy from China. And I kind of want to share with you in different steps, everything that we are going through, all of our emotions and just everything. So you guys have an opportunity to see this is this entire process documented. We most likely knew we wanted a kiddo that was a special focus kiddo, meaning that they had a medical condition or maybe they had a disease or maybe they had a diagnosis that is unfavorable. Any of those things could po be a possibility. So what me and my husband did is we started talking to physicians, we started ta having meetings, we started doing tons of different things so that we could really figure out which conditions, which 
systems in the body we were comfortable with. So like I said, we sat down with tons of different physicians, we called different doctors, we chatted about different things we knew, just so that we could be really well educated on different conditions. So we came to a consensus that these are all of the conditions that we would be open to. As an RN, I kind of knew that I would be fairly comfortable with quite a few things because I have seen so many different conditions in my scope of practice. So my comfort level is very, very, very high. She often exaggerates like this and I think that's because she's trying to convince us she means it. But why would she need to convince us so much if she does mean it? Here's a message she posted that makes it clear she doesn't want a child who's hard work. We are praying about adopting again and my husband wanted me to ask what special needs would you consider minor or relatively easy to manage that most people wouldn't consider easy. So she wants a child who won't be hard work but who will look to others like he is hard work. So why would you want to adopt a child who other people will think would be really difficult to manage? And I just wanted to say one thing, nobody really said anything about this, but I just want to say um, I'm not doing this to be like holier than thou or to um, look like a certain way. I just don't want people to think that I'm coming on here like saying this to be like braggy or like to be like, wow, I'm such a good person or anything like that. She's telling us that she's not going to be making videos about adopting a child with special needs in order to look like a nice person. Why would she need to tell us that? Why, why would anyone think that that's what she would be doing? A narcissist can often give themselves away by telling you that they're not thinking exactly what they actually are thinking. That is the last reason I would want to ever, ever, ever do this. She's really trying hard to convince us of something. In her first video about the upcoming adoption of Huxley, she asked her viewers to donate $5 each um, to her adoption fund. October 2017 was when she went to China to collect Huxley. Look at what happened to her viewer and subscriber counts. She's trying to come across as this really empathic person, but because she doesn't know how that person really would feel, she doesn't come across as genuine. And she said, yeah, absolutely. And I said, well, what is his specific diagnosis? And she told me on the phone and my heart just stopped. It just stopped so hard and I felt crushed. But she doesn't look crushed. She sent me the file. I opened up the file and I feel like all of the fear that I had when she told me on the phone, I feel like it all went away when I opened this file. But then she continues to talk about how scared she is. Was I scared of his diagnosis? Absolutely, and I'm still scared of his diagnosis. Narcissists often create stories around themselves where they play a role that enables them to be really important in the story. So um, in this case, I think Micah is coming across as the heroine, you know, who, um, who is fighting for good against all odds. Um, and so, it was ironic in a matter of 30 minutes like I kind of went back upstairs and I started doing laundry and different chores and I didn't pressure I didn't want him to feel obligated I just wanted him to know how strong my desire was to adopt because we have three biological kiddos if you're not familiar with me or my family <coughs> excuse me so I kind of left it at that and I wasn't going I told him I'm not going to bring this up to you ever ever again because I don't want to be a bother but I just really put my heart on the line 30 minutes later, he came up to me and he said, I would like to know a little bit more. Is, can you provide me with a little bit more information? And you could tell that he was completely softened and he had completely opened up to the entire adoption idea. And 
I, I feel like tears just ran down my eyes when he said that because I kind of knew that he was opening up. Saying I feel like tears ran down my eyes doesn't sound like a memory, it sounds like a story. And why does she say kiddo every time she mentions a child? It doesn't sound genuine. He flies to China a bunch and he does operations on kiddos that need special needs. He has like his own foundation that helps kiddos in the adoption organization. He's just really, really awesome. And um, he really was point blank with it. He said, you know, I'm not seeing any red flags with this kiddo. It sounds like she's trying hard to come across as sweet. Her last video about Huxley was really positive. He loves making coffee with dad in the morning. They like make it together. He's a little barista. It's so cute. He lives to be outside. Like he is all boy all the time. He wants to be outside. He wants to be on the swings. He wants to be on the swing set. He wants to be riding his power wheels, riding his bikes. And he also lives for food. Another thing that he loves is wrestling on the floor with dad. He will instigate him in the evening to try to get him to wrestle him or like rough house, which trust me, my other son is obsessed with too. But homeboy has made so many gains and leaps and bounds. You guys are gonna be so impressed. One of the big things that he does in the morning is he does his morning chores without even being asked. He'll open all of his blinds, he'll put his pillows on his bed, and then he'll throw his clothes down the shoe. Huxley also has 40 signs, which is huge because last year he only had like a couple under his belt. He is ganging signs so quickly. All of these lovely bright shots, it seems like everything is under control. Her child is doing really well, but actually behind the scenes, things are very different from that because this is such a short time before she decides she doesn't want him to be her child anymore. So why is she giving us such a positive picture of things? Every now and then you may have gotten like a teeny like struggle or like a hardship when I was trying to be like really raw and real, but we haven't intentionally, like day one intentionally, 99, 95% of the struggles we have never, never publicly shown. aired ever ever with pure intent of respecting his privacy. Would you really be disrespecting the privacy of a four-year-old child by talking about some of your struggles while you raise him? Especially considering she has four other children and he has autism. It would be expected that there would be struggles and that she'd be experiencing stress. And it seems really unnatural and strange that she hasn't talked about these struggles. This glossy video comes across to me as an ad for the perfect mother. Probably about like eight months ago, we started kind of working on like opening your blinds. I remember showing him how to open his blinds. I remember showing him that and then showing him it over and over again and he still couldn't do it. Eventually he was able to do it. And now I just wake up in the morning and they're already open and his pillows are already on his bed. Every now and then he needs a little reminder like, hey, you didn't get your blinds. But for the most part, he's got that down packed, which is awesome. Like if I sit down with him every day, he'll learn a new sign and he won't forget it. But to me, it's still so huge because it's the first time ever that we're actually able to communicate with our son and kind of having his ability to get his needs met. I'm gonna leave it here and I'll continue to look at this in the next video. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and please hit the notification bell so that you get notifications when I post videos. I'll see you next time.